For this quick tip, let's talk about how to shade for pyro whenever you're working with Redshift. So right here I have this pyro import, and I've already gone ahead and simulated everything I need and cached it out to a file. So if I go here, we have this cached out to this file one, and if I middle mouse, I've gone ahead and left a few fields available for us. So we have our density, which is going to be our smoke. We have our velocity, which is going to help us blur this a little bit. And then we have our heat, which represents where the flames are. Now, at our material context, let's go ahead and create a Redshift Material Builder. So, let's say Redshift Material Builder. And within this, well, let's actually call this our tutorial fire. And within this, we can go ahead and create an RS volume node and plug that into the volume export, like so. Let's go ahead and now apply this to our pyro import network. So we'll go right there and let's select the tutorial fire and hit accept. So right away, let's see what our default settings give us. And here is what our default settings look like. Now, if we go to our HDR, which is this RS light dome, you also want to make sure that under the light tab, we have our contribution scale set to one under the volume section. This is basically going to tell our light to affect our smoke. And by default, it's going to be zero, so you want to set that to one. Now within this volume node, there are three main sections which control the look of our pyro. We have this scatter, which is kind of like our color. It's almost like a diffuse field, if you want to think of it like that. We also have our absorption, which is kind of like our transparency. So how thick is our smoke? How much does our smoke absorb light? And as we change our absorption, we'll be able to see through our smoke more or less, depending on how much absorption you have. And then we also have our emission, which is eventually going to account for all of our flames. So by default, we don't have anything in this emission. And what we need to do is tell Redshift which field is going to be used for our flames, which in this case is heat. So I'll say heat. And I could double check that by middle mousing and saying that, yes, I want this field right here. Now if I press render, let's see what this gives us. All right, and there you have it. Now we have things lighting up within our emission. So the first step to any of this is to, first of all, turn off all of our smoke. We want to focus on the flames first, dial that in, and then bring the smoke back into the picture. So we're going to set our scatter coefficient to zero for a second, our absorption coefficient to zero as well, and now we are only looking at this emission or this heat field for our flames. We're going to go ahead and stop this for a second. And the first thing that we ought to do is go to our advanced tab and change these remap range values. Now, you might imagine that all these voxels have different values in them, right? And these values aren't necessarily things that go in between 0 and 1. So this heat field, for example, has voxels which might hold a value of three or five or six. But we really don't know that until we create a volume slice. So let's create a volume slice like so. And this is going to allow us to view the values that are being held within our voxels. So our source group here is going to be heat. And let's call this attribute heat as well. Now if I set my visibility to this volume slice, what we have is a grid which intersects the middle of our tree. And now we have these points that are shaded according to the values of what those voxels were. So if I go to our geometry spreadsheet, we now have this point attribute called heat, and we can sort by the highest values. So our values are mainly existing between around 3.5 and 0. And that's what I can tell by creating this volume slice. So within our emission remap range, I'm going to set this to an old min and an old max of 0 and 3.5. I'm actually going to overshoot our maximum value by a little bit, just so that we have a little bit of extra range whenever we're dealing with all these values. 
So now that we have this, let's go ahead and hit render again and see what this gives us. So now that I've set this zero as our min and our max to 3.5, I know that I'm capturing all the values that we need. Let's go ahead and switch back to our basic tab and actually create this emission remap ramp. And with this ramp, we're going to control the overall look of our pyro. Now, what this ramp does is it takes this left-hand side and it assigns the values that are lower on our whole thing. So if we go back to our volume slice, it takes the lower values and it's, it assigns it to whatever we have going on on this side of the ramp. So these are our lower values. That relates to this side. Our higher values, these red values, are going to exist on the right side. And before we adjust this, I want to take a look at some reference to get an idea of what's actually happening with this heat. So if we go to our desktop here and we take a look at some of these photos, I want to just talk about some of the ideas of fire in general and what, what's happening here. What you'll notice is that if we take a look at this candle flame, we don't actually have a bright area right where the area is the hottest. So in other words, with our candle, the area that's close to the wick is actually the hottest, but visually, it's actually darker when it gets close to the source like that. So what that tells me is that within our emission ramp, towards the very top, towards these areas which are really hot, we actually want it to go a little bit dark, like that. Now, as we go, if I go back to our reference here, as we go towards the edge along here, for one, we have a very sharp edge. So we want to be sure that this is eventually sharp around here. And then we also have kind of this gradual fade off, which turns into this orange and a slight bit of red along the, the rim as well. So with this, eventually I want to go ahead and do something kind of like that to give us that sharp edge. Now for the colors on this, let's go ahead and create a volume visualization node. And under our presets, within our emission, what we can do is select this black body. And this will give us a set of colors that relates to pyro. So if we copy this, let's say copy parameter, let's go ahead and just paste this into our emission remap ramp. And then we can adjust what we want from here. So there we go. We have our kind of middle section like this, which is good. If I go back to our reference, let's go ahead and check out what a forest fire might actually look like instead of a candle. And you'll notice that we have a lot of oranges going on. We have a lot of yellows. The areas where it's really hot is going to be this intense yellow, almost clipping a little bit visually. And um, that's what we want to try to recreate. With those goals in mind, here is our fire right now. And first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of some of this red. If we look towards the edges, we want to be sure that we have a, a very stark edge along here. And then let's also go ahead and create this along here so that we have some of these holes happening around uh, wherever the fire begins. So kind of like, if I go back here to the reference, kind of like these areas along here, it's a little bit difficult to see, where it's, the flame is actually offset a little bit from its source. So that's what we're capturing here with this section. Let's set it to about right there. And let's also go ahead and move this yellow over a little bit like so to give us that value. Okay, so we have a general flame going on. The next thing I'd like to do, now that we have this, is go back to our advanced tab and then change this new min and new max to a different value. And I'm actually going to start with the new max on this one. So for this, I kind of like to just adjust it and play everything by what my eye sees. So what I like to do is I like to leave a little bit 
of this kind of um, that offset, that kind of almost like hole effect, right? That we get from this, like I was showing you before. So I wanna leave a little bit of that in there, but I also wanna keep the main body of the flame really bright as well. So with this new Max, if I go too far, we have too much of this going on, right? This is obviously too much. If I go too low like this, then uh, we don't have any of that effect. So I just want a little bit, maybe like right around there. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and then just kind of fine tune what we have along here. So for one, this is looking a little bit too yellow. I wanna add a little bit more orange so I can go kind of right around there with that. You can also go ahead and play around with this emission. So if I start at zero, I can gradually bring this up until we're slightly clipping, like so. And then with this, I can just kind of control what might look good. So you'll just have to kind of play around until you find an area that's working pretty well for what you need. But the main thing is to be sure to keep the areas over here and over here sharp in your gradients. So once you have your fire and you like the way that this looks, the next thing to do is to introduce the smoke. So with our density, I'm going to turn this back to one and I'm going to turn up our absorption coefficient by a little bit. Now, like I said before, the absorption coefficient kind of relates to the transparency of our smoke. So the higher I bring this, the more dense the whole thing is going to become, and the less likely you are to actually see through the smoke and uh, see what's behind it. If I go back to our reference here, actual forest fire smoke really isn't that thick though. It's not like a, uh, a gasoline explosion or something like that. It's actually a bit of a uh, thinner, cooler colored smoke. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's set our absorption coefficient to something smaller, like let's say 0.25. Let's go ahead and also set our density, which is kind of like our color, to a more cool color. So if we go here to our temperature, we can actually just set this to something that's a little bit more blue so, and then what we can do is change our amount of smoke within this whole thing by going back to our advanced and changing this old min and old max. So kind of like we did before with the flames, if we go back here and create a volume slice, let's call this one density. So we'll select density here and then call this attribute density. Let's remap our values so that we're existing within a correct range, go like that. Looks like density goes up to about 2.8, or in this case, I'll say three. So the old max is three, and zero is our min. Now that we have this, let's see what this gives us. And there we go, we have something like this. And now what I can do is adjust this new min and new max to give us the right amount that we need. So as I turn up this new max, we're going to get more smoke, right? So I wanna turn this down a little bit, and the further I go down, the less of it I start seeing. So we can go like that. Another thing that we can also do is go back to our basic tab here and turn down the actual value here of our smoke. So let's actually bring this to kind of a, a darker blue around here, and this is going to correlate with what we see along here. So there we go, a little bit of a thinner smoke, a little bit more blue like that. That's about what I was seeing in the reference. If we go back to our advanced, we can then adjust the shadow density scale to give us a more shadowed or a less shadowed result with our smoke. And one thing I like to do with this is turn it up to a high value so that we can really start seeing the form come out, and then we can bring this back up a little bit, maybe turn this down, and really just kind of fine tune a good area. So I think maybe like five would be good. We could see a lot of the detail now within our smoke, but it's still kind of light and wispy at the same time. 
So we have something right around there, which works out pretty well. And then last but not least, I want to show you that within our actual SOP context, so within the pyro import SOP, well, what we can do is tell Redshift to blur the voxel values based off of the velocity field. So if I stop this for a second, we ought to go to this Redshift object tab. And if that's not there, you just need to go to Redshift and say add object parameters right there. And under this Redshift object tab, we have the volume. And under this Redshift volume tab, we have this use velocity grids, which we can check. And with this, it'll utilize our velocity in x, y, z to give us this blurring effect. Now, you also need to be sure to go to your out context and tell Redshift that you are going to allow motion blur. So enable motion blur. And with the combination of that and this velocity grid, we're going to blur it upwards like that. If I was to set this to zero, to give you an idea of what this looks like before, it's going to give us a result that's not blurred. And then obviously, when we set it up to like six, it's going to blur it. So there you go. This is the velocity grid at zero, which is pretty cool because we have a lot of this kind of uh, curly detail going on. So that, that does look pretty nice in a lot of situations. But whenever we set this to a high value, like let's say six, it's going to blur all of this and give us that kind of camera blur effect that you end up seeing a lot of times around here. So kind of like right around here is a good example of that camera blur. And that's what it's trying to capture essentially by, by doing this. So you can really see it right here. And, um, and there you go. As always, you can find a link to my other courses within this video's description. And thanks for watching.